Hi, I'm Patrick Bailey with IQList.com. Today is May 13th, 2020. And in this video, I'll be going over my Acorn face shield that I designed in OpenSCAD. Okay, so here's the idea. Let me try to go over this real, go over this real quickly, go over the numbers, then go a little bit into the OpenSCAD. Uh, somebody posted this out there. It's out there on, on Prusa printers. It happens to be, what, 31216 Acorn face shield. This is the one I, I posted a week or so ago that has the stacks. And it's, and it's, it's the one you probably want to download if you want to print as is. But I also downloaded this one, oops, not that one, this one just recently. Uh, today, this is actually the Open SCAD. And so I'll go over more detail on how the Open SCAD works and how you can use it in different things. But the basic idea, this is another, another face shield. Now, right here in Colorado and other places, you know, we're still printing the Prusa face shield, which is the what the doctors want. And it's really good and it works really well. But um, for me, and for some other, pur I have some other purposes I think I can do with these face shields um, for fun, uh, once this whole crisis gets a little bit calmed down. I like this for the doctors, but I do like 3D Verkistan for normal people who don't have, may not have as, don't have to wear it 12 hours a day every single day. I like the idea of the 3D Verkistan because we've got that uh, integrated headband, so you can just stick it on, you're good to go. Uh, and also, I do like uh, Joel telling the 3D printing nerd took that and he made the manta ray. And so he kind of combined the two and he made this thing. It looks pretty cool. Um, but I thought, hey, maybe we could do one, I don't want to say one better, but one different where we could use OpenSCAD to programmatically make it. That way, people could adjust it and do other things with it. Or some of my future ideas I have for kind of, uh, it's, it's a neat headband. So maybe you can do some adjustments with it for other purposes, you know, for like costuming or things like that. I got some ideas. But I do like this idea, this integrated headband. Um, so um, that's kind of what the birth of the idea is. And, and then once I got a design done, I took it to my daughter and kind of did what Joel Telling did. Uh, he, asked, he asked his daughter, what's this look like? And she said Manta Ray, which is a pretty cool name. Uh, luckily, my daughter said Acorn for mine. So, <laughs> But then a minute later, she said, oh, Stingray. But I'm like, Stingray, Manta Ray, too close. So I stuck with Acorn. So... Um, so I wanted to kind of combine a bunch of different ideas and also make mine in such a way that it could stack really well and come apart really well. So there's the, the, the idea. Now with that, let me go over the numbers real quick. So over here, if you go on the first one I printed, I, I did, there are some 3MF files here. And the 3MF files are a 2, 5, and a 10 uh, for PLA. Now for the 10 PLA, uh, let me go over the numbers. Now the 10 PLA took 8 hours and 31 minutes to print. It took 6.7 yeah, cents of electricity, and it weighs 0.194 kilograms, which comes up to $3.88 worth of material. So in total, it costs $3.95 to print 10, or roughly $40 per face shield. So not too bad. Um, anyway, there's the numbers. So uh, with that, uh, also uh, with the design, and I'll go over some of the stuff I did, uh, somebody already took it and did a remix of it. So they did a little remix and they added a little bar here so that they could put a little, they could print out a little tray and pop it in and snap it in. I haven't tried to print his out yet, but I really like that idea because I was, I was trying to figure out a way to make it, to fill in the tray. And I, I did fill in the tray. I have a way, I have a version on the open escalator, just push a button and you can fill a tray in. However, to get that to stack, um, just, was not going to be very successful. I tried one or two ideas. They didn't work. Maybe I could try a few more. But I do like the idea. This is just simpler where, hey, don't even try to um, print it with trays and stacks. Hey, instead of print a, a tray and snap it in. So that's a really cool idea. But with that, um, let me go over, not in great detail, but in some detail, the open SCAD um, that I made to get this working. Okay, so here kind of was my idea. I took all three of these, brought them into OpenSCAD, so I can kind of look at how they are and figure out how to overlay what I wanted to do. Now, um, I like the 3D Verkistan because it's simple and has that. However, uh, some of the people were complaining about it, it was too close to your face. And so we have the, um, the, the Manta Ray here, which extends it out a little further and also eliminates the need for multiple hole punches or six on there. And I think you had to do that to make sure it held firm. But I think uh, with a nice arch, similar to what, just one single arch, that seems to hold things well enough. So you don't need multiple hole punches. So that's a time saver and a convenience. Um, but if you look at this, it's not quite as far out as the Prusa one. And also, you know, they're both thinner than the Prusa one. The Prusa is taller. And I wanted to put some, I kind of wanted to 
make an OpenSCAD version so you could kind of make what you wanted. Did you want to make it narrow? Did you want to put a tray in? Do you want to make it wider? Uh, with my goal of trying at first for my design that I put out there to make it kind of similar arches to the outside of the Prusa and then similar width outside. So I kind of use this as my template to go back and forth and do some testing. So now with that, if you go look at uh, the files that I have up here um, that I put out on Prusa, uh, Prusa printers, there's a couple of things. There's an acorn face shield, which is the key one. That's the one that's going to work. But there's also a Fusion 360 and a stacker to, to allow you to stack them. Now, the confusion might be for this acorn Fusion 360, and I'll kind of go over that. If you look at my other one, what I have done, uh, if you look at my programming, so here, here's a result of one that comes out. But if you look at this, it's very square on the top. So I try to do this, and I try to print it out, and I try to, to make this stackable, but there was too much contact surface, so it was hard to break apart. You could, but it was difficult. And what I wanted to do was get a stackable version that I could break apart by hand, knowing that some people might need to make a tool to, you know, and even me, like I would rather use a tool to kind of, you know, break a little bit and then get a, a screwdriver in there and break it apart easier. But if I could make it easy enough where I could break it apart by hand, then most everyone could either do it by hand or at worst case, use a tool and, and not get, uh, not too worried about breaking it. Like I've, I've had some where they were stuck too much together that they actually, some of them broke in an unrecoverable way. So um, as is, if you're going to print one out, this works just fine. But um, a little too much contact surface. So what I did, and I've, I've made things a little easier now. What I did is I did take this, and I found some really weird ways to turn this into an SVG file. And I'm not going to go over that. And then bring it into Fusion 360 and redraw it. Because all of these are arcs. All these are arcs that connect together. So all they are are just simple parts of a circle. And I stuck it all together and remade it in Fusion 360. And then in Fusion 360, you could do the, the uh, chamfer or the fillet. You know, in OpenSCAD, it's kind of hard to round these edges. But in Fusion 360, it was rather easy. So what I did is I did this without the nubs. I'd remove the nubs, um, kind of brought it to Fusion, Fusion 360, remade it, in Fusion, yeah, remade it in Fusion 360 without the nubs, and then brought, it back, brought that back in to Fusion 360 and then added the nubs. So actually, I should probably just, I should probably just show that. It's harder to, exp to explain than show. So this one, it actually looks for a file called Fusion 360 Fillet locally, and it takes that in, and then what it's gonna do, if it'll run, okay, come on, run. Just thinking, there we go. So you can see here, here's my version that, that was rounded in Fusion 360, but I can bring the file in. And here, it's adding those nubs back in. Now you see this kind of ghosting effect. But if I hit uh, render, you'll see that ghosting effect goes away. So this adds the nubs back in. And that might be a good option if you want to do something... If you want to make it smoother and rounder, it might be a good idea to do something like this. So I did actually update my code. We'll let that render right now. I did update this code because the key factor, if you want to do this in Fusion 360 and smooth it out, are to get the information on those circles. What's their X, Y position? What's their radius? What's their arc? So now if you actually run this down here in the lower hand side, it'll talk about all the, the things here. So it says front arc, which is this green arc up here. And it'll give you the X and Y position, the radius. That's a hundred uh, millimeter radius. The arc is 163, degree, 163 degrees of the arc, and the rotation is zero. It's actually not offset. And the back arc, which is this purple one, uh, has a thickness of four, X and Y of zero, negative 71.5, a radius of 100, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then there are the tray arcs, which are these guys right here. And there's only one because the other one's a mirror of the other one, so you only need to one. And then there is, let's see, the headband arc. Oh, oh, no, sorry. I said that wrong. The tray arcs. That's these two little red arcs. You only need one because one's a mirror of the other one. That's the arc that connects the purple and the green. Then there's the headband arc, which is this part right here, but not the little curly cue. Then there's the headband curly arches, and that's the curly arch, which you... Actually, I guess I am printing out both. So they're a mirror of each other. Oh, they should be. Uh, yep. I don't have to go look at that. 270 at any rate so that so you can actually take that information 
and bring that in Fusion 360 and remake it by hand if you want to. And that's probably a better idea than what I did. But uh, here, let's go over what you can do. The cool thing about this is you have this front arc, boom, and you have these nubs. Now these nubs are the American nubs. So we, we were redesigning exactly what uh, Prusa did here with the uh, cone going up here and that. Uh, and so in fact, here are the nubs. So you can reposition the nubs. And in fact, the side nubs, I mean, they are a mirror image of each other, but I actually wrote them out by hand. So there's a negative 93 and a 93. The back arches, they actually arch back just a little bit, a couple of degrees to make sure it snaps on. Uh, so you can actually, whatever you redesign, if you redesign that front arch, you may have to move these. Um, also, if you're dealing with a European design, I did add uh, the European design. So if you did not want to use the American nubs, you can go here to the American here and say false. And if you say false, hopefully those will change. And you can see they're, they're a little bit shorter. Uh, so if you want to use the European nubs, of course the European nubs are have a different pattern, so you'd have to move them anyway. But but I did copy what they look like. Okay, so there you go. So you have that. And so you can start moving things. So like this purple one here is the back arch. And if I decide here, you know, the thickness, X, Y, radius, and arc, and the radius is right here, this 100. So if I decided that radius um, was not enough, I could change it. 120, which should push it out if I'm thinking correctly. There you go. And it pushes that out. And then you can see there's a lot of calculations, which I won't go into right now, but I hopefully will do a live video at some point. And it automatically adjusts. This red part, there's a bunch of geometry calculations going on in the background to make sure that that arch matches up perfectly. Uh, but I could come over here and say, you know what? I want 80, which will pull it back. And so it's actually be closer to your face. So you can do all kinds of still cool stuff. Or that arc that's 90, deg 90 degrees, I could say, hey, I want it to be 120. And it moves. Well, now, okay, so now I started to break things because now it's further apart. We have to change things. Oh, you could do that. <laughs> that's an interesting, interesting idea. You could actually do this in such a way that these match up. I hadn't thought about that. You could probably do like a 180, and I bet you you could get them to, yeah, you could probably fit it with that number and get it. You could probably do a lot of math and get it exactly perfectly or just get it really close. That's a funny idea. Huh. Now, of course, that pushes it way far further out. And then you're gonna have you'd probably want to adjust these. So I don't suggest using these settings, but the interesting thing is you can tweak them. Um, so let me go undo what I did. Go back to 100. Um, now you can come in here and fiddle with it. So if you didn't like the height, if you wanted a height more like Prusa's, you put in 20, and it goes up to 20. But if you did that, the thickness might be too thick. So you might drop it down to like 2.5, and you could print that out and fiddle with it. Now you do see these weird arcs going out that are ghosting, but if I hit the render, you'll see those go away. But it might take a second to do that. Um, so there it is. You can do all this cool stuff. Or you could also, let's see, here's the back arch nubs. Yeah, arches to hold on the head. So if the arches on, on the back aren't quite lined up how you want, same thing, you can go here and just start tweaking these. You can tweak the numbers and you'll see those move, but all the other arch arcs will line up pretty well, but as you saw, I could go to an extreme and break it. You know, I could get a little bit further off, but for someone who wants to tweak it a little bit, like you could make it, uh, if you have a little head or a giant head, there are those of us who have giant heads, and you could just adjust it so it's maybe not putting so much pressure on you. Um, also, you can go, you see all that went away, you can come in here and say, you know what, do you want a tray? So if you want a tray cover, I can say true, and it will make a little tray on the bottom. So you can add that to true. Uh, also, there's a visor. I, you can, this might be interesting for some people, you can actually go back in here and reprogram this to make a visor. So I come down here and say, uh, do a visor. And actually I made two versions of a visor, so we'll see if this is still working. Boom, there's my first version. And it, you know, geometrically puts it in there. But if you don't like that one, there's another version. I'll set that to true, it'll use the second version. And there's my second version of my visor. Uh, but again, you can design your own visor and tweak it. The, the code is there, which might be a little complicated at first glance, but hopefully at some point 
I'll do a live, you know, two or three hour demo going over all the fun geometry in here. Lots of cool geometry. Um, but uh, there it is. Let me change this back to false. Boom. And you brought that in. And so there's that little tray. Um, lots of cool things you could do. Or, oh, here's a tray. There's a tray height. If I want that tray to go all the way up, you know, change that to 20 and I've got a tray going all the way up, you know. Uh, lots of little cool tweaks you can do out there. But again, with uh, OpenSCAD, it's kind of, I don't know a simple way at all to chamfer the sides. So it might be an interesting idea to design it in here, get something working, and then you might want to bring Diffusion 360 to smooth the sides out. Um, definitely if you want to stack them, because otherwise stacking is going to be a little difficult. But a lot of us might just need a one-off. Like, for example, if you're doing a visor, you can't really stack the one with a visor, so you might as well just do a one-off with that. But anyway, that's my quick tutorial going over how this stuff works. Let me undo. Make that true again. So there is the Joyous Fusion 360. So next, let me go, I'll do a little close-up video, and I'll show you some of the stacks I currently have. Uh, fr now these, this is not rendered from this. These are the ones that pulled in Fusion 360 and made the stacks. So these are the stacks that are, if I can find the file, these are the stacks that are on this Prusa printer, the first one I put on there. And the three, and if you're going to do them, I'd suggest downloading the 3MF file, because not only are they stacked in 10, but there's also some special settings you can do in the Prusa slicer to help it come apart even better. And that's what these are, so we'll show you how they come up with. Okay, so here's some of the stuff to show you. So here's one where I printed the tray out. Now it's going to stiffen things up a bit, but it's got a tray for those who might need it. And then here's one, I think this is my second version of my visor. We basically have two cylinders interacting, hitting, and so I've got a something. It was just an attempt to do something. Um, and I could fiddle with the code some more, but... Anyway, you guys could fit it with it too. But let me take some of these apart. So I got a couple different stacks here. And I'm going to try, you know, it's nice to use a tool maybe like this to help you out, to pull it apart. But for now, I'm going to try to do it without it as best I can. Now, one nice thing is when, if you have a mess up like this one does, it's only the ones above it that are messed up. So I should be able to pull this guy off and toss him. And he hasn't really affected anybody below him. Did you stop that first? I did. It was. It was. Uh, the filament was sticky. And it wasn't. It was uh, no longer coming out of the coming out of the nozzle. So I had to. It's kind of failing. So that one I stopped on purpose. Yeah. Oh, which reminds me, I didn't show my stacker code. <laughs> I should guess I. Uh, the stacker code that I put in there, it'll take an STL file and you can say how many stack, how high you want the stack to be. Um, so it's, it's interesting, but uh, chances are you might want to just use the 3MF files I put out there because they do have the better in-between in settings. So here I'm going to try to just bend this. Where, you know, normal people, it's probably a good idea to, you know, get a gap and start to work it. But for me, I want to make sure that I can do it by my, by my own hand, otherwise, you know, I think I need to redesign it. So here we can just kind of twist a little bit. I want to make sure that if you forced it, you know, it wasn't going to break. Okay, oh, there we go. Once you get them going, popping right off. There we go. So you got three. Next, here's a here's a ten stack, and this is printed uh, with the exact uh, 3MF file that I have out there right now. So this one is in PLA. There you go. Boom. 
and look, I haven't broken any of them. And so far, um, with this new design, I haven't, when I've printed out stacks, I haven't broken any of them, so that's been nice. Almost got it. It's probably far like easier, like I said, to use a tool. I just want to prove that it can come apart by hand if need be. And there we go, no breakage. And I've got that, so it's all working. Okay, I'm currently printing my first 0.25 nozzle print, so expect a video on that soon. In the meantime, I'm sure I will throw up some image on Instagram as it completes. Another interesting thing, my son had me print a Stormtrooper helmet that he pieced together. It's been a lot of work on his part, uh, but he's still got a little bit more work to go, but it's looking pretty good. It's a pretty interesting print. Um, I'm not sure if I'll do a video on or not in the future, but he's been having a lot of fun with it and putting a lot of effort into it, and it's a pretty cool print.